So we have for a while now been working towards our binary phase diagram, which will tell us the equilibrium composition and phase or phases in a binary system. And I will sketch here a eutectic, although we will see that there are lots and lots of ways that this phase diagram could look. So what the phase diagram really tells us about is the, are the conditions for equilibrium in multi-component and multi-phase or heterogeneous systems. And open, I guess, because we have to allow for the exchange of matter. So this is what we are interested in, and we will see now how we can do this. Uh, it is the case that at equilibrium, the chemical potential of any species in phase one will be equal to the chemical potential in phase two. We can be a little bit more specific and rigorous and say that for a system that has P possible phases and C total components, that the equilibrium conditions are given as follows. The temperature in phase one is equal to the temperature in phase two, using Roman numerals here, and so on, is equal to the temperature in the alpha phase. We can keep going all the way till we list the P phase. Right? So the temperatures have to be equal in all of the phases. The same statement is true about the pressures in equilibrium. The pressure of each phase has to be equal. The chemical potential of component one has to be equal, in phase one, has to be equal to the chemical potential of component one in phase two, equal to the chemical potential of component one in the alpha phase, and so on. We can write the same thing for component two. Right? And we could keep going with this list all the way down to the seeth component. So this makes it seem like it's really complicated. In reality, we will generally only be dealing with two components and maybe with two or three phases only. Okay, So we will be considering more or less sort of this uh, subset, let's say, of equations, if we have two components and two phases only. So we can simplify it a little bit. So let's assume that we have a binary system, so two components, two phases, two phases, and we're going to call these the alpha phase and the liquid phase. And so the conditions for equilibrium are like this. So that's the conditions for equilibrium. This part, the temperatures being equal, that's sort of easy enough to achieve and conceptually easy enough to uh, understand. The harder ones are these chemical potentials. So the question is, how, how do we find the chemical potential even? right? And the answer is that we get this from a plot of delta G mixing. right? So this is delta G mix. This is x2, component 2. And we can uh, remember that delta G mix 
is equal to g solution minus g of the components. So let's say that we have some curve here for the alpha phase. And now I want to find the chemical potential. The chemical potential, remember, is the partial molar G. Defined like this at constant T, P, and N2. And we can find the chemical potential then as the intercept on this plot. So if I'm interested in the chemical potential at this particular composition, I draw the tangent to the curve and I read off this intercept and this is actually given by this here and this is really delta mu A but it's this difference from zero. So it's the intercept of this tangent line which gives us the chem chemical potential and let's see I should have not put mu a here but should have put mu one sorry and over here this is delta mu two from zero here if this is delta g mix Okay, so that's how we can even find the chemical potential. Now, a few phases present that we are interested in, and we can look at delta G mix versus X2. And so we have, let's say, one curve here for the alpha phase and one curve for the liquid phase and then at any particular composition we could draw our tangent lines and find where those chemical potentials were. So obviously in general the chemical potential of component 2 in alpha and liquid is not the same, right? Because the intercept of this tangent is not the same as the intercept of this tangent in general. But it turns out that there can be, and there are, in fact, special combinations, basically, of temperature that allows that to occur. So let's look at one of those cases. So this is an example from the book, and you'll see this is a plot of delta G mix versus X2 for the alpha phase, which is this curve here, and for the liquid phase, so let me try to trace these out. So this is the alpha phase, and this is for the liquid phase. And at this particular temperature, these two curves cross, and we can then draw the tangent to them so that this line here is tangent to both curves at the same time. So it's tangent to the alpha curve there and the liquid curve there, which tells us here that the chemical potential of component 2 in alpha is equal to the chemical potential of component 2 in liquid and over here that the chemical potential of component 1 in alpha is equal to the chemical potential of component 1 in liquid. So these are the conditions for equilibrium. They are met uh, sort of according to this line at this particular temperature. At compositions between x2 equals 0 over to this point right here, the system can minimize its free energy by being in the alpha phase. So along this range, it will be in the alpha phase at compositions between X2 liquid and 1. The system can minimize its free energy here by being in the liquid phase. So here it'll be in the liquid phase. In between these two, 
the system will be in two-phase region and the way that that happens is that the system can actually decrease its total free energy basically by separating into um, the alpha phase with this particular composition and the liquid phase with this particular composition that minimizes the free energy of the system overall. But this construction allows us to determine what are those compositions that allow these two phases, alpha plus liquid, to be in equilibrium with one another at this temperature. As you move across this region here, right in here, so this is the two phase region. As you move across here in composition, the amount of each phase changes, but the composition of each phase does not. So this is for some particular temperature, and if we wanted to translate this to a phase diagram, all right, here's our phase diagram T and X2. For some particular value of T, we would now know, as a result of looking at these G curves, what uh, points to make on the phase diagram, where to the left this is in the alpha phase, to the right this is in the liquid phase, and in between we are in the two-phase region. As we start to add more possible phases to our system, we will continue to use the same approach to determining the equilibrium conditions between any two phases, which is that we will simply look at the G-mix curves as a function of composition. And however many phases you have, that's how many curves, uh, in theory, could show up here. So the number of phases determines the number of curves. In some cases, a phase has um, a particularly high, which is to say positive delta G mix, and it's sort of not part of the interesting story that's going on here. But the system will then adopt whichever phase has the lowest delta G mixing, and again it's possible that that could be a two-phase region where two different phases are in equilibrium with one another with compositions given by the common tangent construction.